What's a bubble? The thing you bought as a kid, or should I say what you recently bought at the grocery store while checking out? No, you're right. We're talking about the dot-com, weed, Bitcoin, housing bubble that single-handedly brought people up to millionaire status and then took it all back and even turned billionaires into millionaires. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jacob Fisher, and today we're talking about market bubbles. How to avoid them, how to profit from them, and most importantly, how to tell when they're happening. Now, I'm not an investment professional, so this is for entertainment purposes only. And with that said, let's tap the like button and get into it. First and foremost, we need to talk about what a bubble is when we're talking about the stock market. Another name for it is when a group of stocks goes parabolic. A single stock can go parabolic in a group and bring the entire group up but a single stock cannot go parabolic and be called a bubble. This is pretty evident in the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency bubble that happened just a few years ago. Bitcoin was the one flying high, but a ton of other little names ended up gaining some of that momentum and also just skyrocketing and providing people with massive gains. The best way to understand a bubble is a rapid inflation of price when compared to a normal day or normal week, normal month. If you've ever seen a video on penny stock traders, you know a lot of them talk about parabolic moves, but that's a little bit different than a bubble because a single stock might go up in a single day, up upwards of 400%, but that's not a bubble with just one stock going up. The thing we need to be careful about a bubble is not getting caught in it when it pops. Here's the Bitcoin chart, and I think we all know the story here. Everyone and their grandma wanted a piece of Bitcoin, and in fact, I know people who bought it at 18,000, 20,000, and well, I just hope they don't see this video and at me after this. But Bitcoin went all the way up to 20,000 and then dropped very heavily after that. Now I think we're sitting around 11,000 at the time of this video that's being filmed. It might be different when you watch this, but. That initial drop after that huge upward spike should have been a signal to get out had you invested in it for the long term or for some of the term. A lot of people thought it was gonna go back up, but that was kind of just a signal for people to get out rather than get in again for a new high. After it capped out at that point, panic selling ensued after that when it made new lows for at least the past couple of weeks, months, and a lot of people just kind of sold and got out. And then of course, some people are still holding today sitting around the 18,000 price range. The thing is when an asset spikes over 700% in just a few short weeks or months, Tesla, then it's probably an indication it's not going to hold, nor would it be a good time to invest in it at that point. How do we make money off of it though? There has to be a way to profit off of massive spikes, just even 50, 100, 150%, just to get a little bit out of the move that's currently happening. Don't worry, that is incredibly possible with a bit of timing and some mental fortitude to know when you should sell and to not hold on. Let's keep using Bitcoin as an example because it's pretty recent and it's very big or very famous, I should say. Bitcoin was talked about on the news all the time. Of course, other cryptocurrencies are going, but Bitcoin was the headliner. Everyone's on the news talking about it and people wanna be owning Bitcoin and maybe mining it too if they have the opportunity. It's when everybody is talking about on the news that you know we are starting to enter some type of bubble phase or at least some hype up phase for a potential bubble. Bubbles don't just go straight up though. They gradually go up at a quicker rate than the normal market and then they crash. A lot of them crash. That's the thing about bubbles is that they pop. So when it crashes, that's kind of what we're looking for. Not massive crashes. Well, you could get in then and get a bit of gains, but the initial crash is what we're looking for. So Bitcoin hit 20K and then it crashed down a bit and then it hit, I think 18K and then it dropped all the way down to 8,000. That's not the crash we were looking for. We weren't looking for that 18,000 price tag crash. We were looking for one previously because the massive spike that happened weeks before to take Bitcoin to 20K was indication that it might be running out soon. It had gone up too much and too quickly in a short period of time to be a sustainable move. Either way, had you wanted to get in during that time, Bitcoin crashed about 10%, which is the magic number we're looking for here. You wanna take the overall high and then go down about 10%, and that's a decent place to get back in. Now, you don't have to get back in exactly when it hits 10% down. You could get in when it makes a higher low or finds a bit of support, which it did after it hit 20,000, went back to 18,000. It went back up. You could have got in for a nice 20, 30% move just in a couple weeks. We're not looking to profit the entire 700%, just 50, 100, 150% gains would be 
okay with me. Back to that 10% rule. Now, like 90% of the time when an asset crashes hard for maybe 10% or so, it's gonna go back up. If it doesn't make a new all-time high, it's probably going to make at least a little bit of a high. When it crashed about the 10%, you could get back in and that would have been a perfect time to profit, again, just a little bit. Let's take November 20th. When Bitcoin crashed a bit after it hit 7,500, people were talking about it, it fell to 6,600. That seemed like a prime time to get in, again, around that 10% range, and you could get in and then ride it. You technically could have ridden it up to 20,000, but you could have at least gotten something out of it. Don't buy when it spikes 10% in a day because it might just drop after that. Even if you miss 20 to 30% gains in a single day, you don't wanna be the one that bought at the high and then had to sell at the low point. You'd probably be kidding yourself as I have done before, so don't do that. How do we know when a bubble is happening though? I sort of mentioned this in another video, but it's pretty easy to tell. You just have to pay attention to what people are talking on social media or the news predict an actual bubble is near impossible because it's fueled by millions, billions, trillions of dollars coming into an asset and pushing it up. You can't predict when the next trillion dollar move is going to happen on a random stock. It's just very difficult to do. I guess you could be looking out for the next big thing, but that happens all the time and maybe not everything is the next big thing. It could be a tiny bubble that has no momentum and no holding power and you just got in in a pumping dump by accident, I guess. That's why I think it's important to find an asset that might be the next bubble that people are talking about, a lot of people are talking about, and then wait for the next drop before you get in. It's probably the safest and most effective way to profit off of a potential bubble. Just paying attention to the news and not getting FOMO is key in investing in general. That's why you probably shouldn't buy Tesla right now. Let me know down in the comments if you're gonna be ready for the next bubble. I upload videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on travel and finance, so if that sounds like of something of interest to you, make sure you subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.